I have my home nine front grid file and auth server now, but I need something to interact with that system with. Uh, if you're on a budget, you can just use draw term on some other operating system, but I'm going to set up a plan nine style terminal. Uh, for this, I'm going to use this. This is the B-Link Thin T4 Pro. I did a video on this a while back. These sort of mini PCs are becoming very common and very cheap. Um, this is pretty meager by today's standards. It's a dual core Celeron, it comes with four gigs of RAM and EMMC based storage, which is only slightly better than a thumb drive. Uh, but I'm not going to use the storage because I have a file server. Instead, I'm going to pixie boot this. So it has ethernet on the back. This thing also includes a uh, Wi-Fi chip that's uh, Intel based. So it's, uh, there are drivers for uh, nine front for it. Um, this is gonna be similar to how the original plan nine grid worked at Bell Labs. Um, they had a special file server with a big multi-CPU machine for doing heavy work, but day-to-day -day stuff was done on simple machines that just had a mouse and a keyboard and a monitor. And I'll add a little bit of a personal history here. I bought this mini C uh, PC partly because it cost less than 100 bucks, and specifically because it had a dual Celeron. And while uh, cleaning my house, I came across a manual for a motherboard I owned years ago. The... Uh, Abit BP6. Um, this was the motherboard that Intel said could not be built. And if you see on the diagram here, it had two spots on it for two uh, socket 370 CPUs. Um, so I had this back in the year 2000. Uh, back then, multi CPU machines were serious business hardware and they came with serious business prices. Um, I was in college at the time and had access to some. Uh, but only as shared Unix servers. Um, this motherboard costs like $150, if I remember right. Um, and it took the far more affordable Celeron processors. So this let me play with multi-CPU at home, uh, which was a lot of fun. Uh, Multi-cores were still kind of a cutting edge thing at the time. Um, but enough of the trip down memory lane. So here I am connected to the grid with uh, draw term on a Linux machine. The thin T came with Windows, so I was able to use that to get the MAC address off of it. Uh, looking at the nine front FQA, I'm going to need to run a DHCP server. So I have that set up now. So I'm running a DHCP server and a TFTP server. Uh, I also need an entry in my um, lib and DB local for this particular machine. So I gave it a name, put in its ethernet address, and when the thing fires up and asks DHCP for an address, I'll hand it this one. I'll also need to have a file for it to use for the uh, Pixie Boot system. And from previous testing, I know I need this EFI version here. Uh, the next thing I'll need is an entry in the config directory under PXE. You make a file named with the MAC address, and in it, you'll put the stuff that you would put in a uh, plan9.ini. So it has things like the kernel you want to boot, um, the boot args, in this case, it's going to be booting and loading everything off the file server. So it's just going to use TLS, uh, an encrypted connection to the file server. Put the addresses for the file and auth, so I don't need to enter them manually. And then the rest of the sort of things you would need for um, terminal operations. So your mouse, monitor, and all that sort of stuff. So I've already gone into the BIOS and set it to use the uh, Pixie Boot Network as the primary boot device. With that set, I can just let the uh, built-in boot process run. Uh, for those who want more details, when I say Pixie, I mean PXE, which is the pre-boot execution environment. Uh, it uses DHCP to get the address of a server um, where it can pull the operating system from. And so now I've hit enter to go ahead and confirm that I want to use TLS. Uh, it asks for a user, and that's going to be the host owner of this particular uh, device, this terminal. And now it's going to set up the network, contact the server. I want to confirm that I'm logging in as Glenda. Put in my password. So these little messages that pop up are, uh, I've asked around and I guess they're part of like a backwards compatibility. It's probing the BIOS for various things. So 
Some computers do it worse than others, but you just sort of wait for it to finish. But anyway, uh, this works well on Plan 9 Grid for several reasons. First off, I'm already using a storage on a remote machine to fetch programs from the server. Um, so yeah, I don't need to worry about the storage on this device. If I don't want to use it, I can just kill the power and that's fine. Other than that, all my files are here. All the programs I might want. Um, and I can also get away with using very cheap hardware. Again, this thing's mostly just here to provide um, a mouse, a keyboard, monitor, and just enough processing to run local processes. Later, I'll be adding on CPU servers, and that'll allow me to, you know, if I need to do something that requires more heavy lifting, I can use another machine for that. Um, and I should probably also demonstrate the, uh, what I mentioned the other on the other video about networking, um, about importing other networking stacks from other computers. So this is on the internal grid network right now, and it doesn't have access to the outside world. So if I try to ping something like Google, it's just going to sit there. It's not going to work. So the file server does have that. There's a few ways you could go about um, setting up a system to import other files from another server. I'm just going to use a very crude one here because uh, I haven't set up anything nicer yet. I'm going to use the rimport command to import something from um, another server. It'll be from central, which is the name of my file server. I'm just going to import the entire serve device. And that's a special virtual device that holds on to file descriptors. So when I set up the secondary network port on the server, I packaged all that up and posted it in serve as net one. So I'm just going to bring over that. I'm going to put it in slash n. Slash n is a, a directory that's provided for just importing random stuff for. Go ahead and run that command. Now if I look in n, I see all those file descriptors held in the file server's serve directory. And you can see the uh, the net one is there. So I'll go ahead and mount n net one over the net directory. And this again, this will only apply to this window because it's per process namespaces. Hit enter. And now when I want to ping, I can go ahead and ping Google again. And there we are. So, you know, showing how you can just sort of, you know, bring in another system's networking device into your process uh, because ultimately they are just files that can just be shared over the network. Um, with that, I'll have a video coming up soon where I show how to, you know, pull down updates and do basic maintenance. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, have fun.